Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Doug Dimmadome back with another Elden Ring challenge video and today we're gonna see if we can be Elden Ring without rolling or blocking at all. Now originally I was just gonna do a no rolling run like I did in Dark Souls 3 which was kind of easy because of the shields and I also did it in Bloodborne which was way harder because of the lack of shields in that game and I also did the DLC but then Steel Grapefruit made a video where he couldn't roll or sprint so obviously he had to use shields to make up for his lack of mobility so I decided I had to step my video up a notch and add no blocking rule. Even though his is still cooler than mine I was like halfway through the game when he uploaded his video and I didn't want to throw all that work away but I have one thing that he doesn't and that's Charlie so it's basically no comment contest if you ask me and I imagine he'll probably delete his video after seeing Charlie. Now I did very minimal research for this run, I just kind of went in and wung it or wang it, I don't know. But to prepare for the first boss fight, all I did was get rid of this old busted ass knife in favor of the one that this man was carrying. Luckily you can parry him, but I still died to him like 5 times while I was trying to kill him, so I just let the summon that automatically comes do most of the work for me while I just bravely stabbed him in the back from time to time while he wasn't looking. I plan on parrying the first boss to death, but as far as I can tell you cannot parry the gold dagger that does holy damage, but luckily there just happens to be a talisman that reduces holy damage on the beach at the beginning of the game so we go off and grab that also before the fight. Eventually though I did get the parry timing down for this fight and I found that standing at ball smelling distance is definitely the way to go because the closer you are the easier it is to parry at least for me. I was really happy that there was a class that starts with a buckler shield because the parry window with this shield is actually pretty nice and after a while I was able to get through the first phase pretty reliably. The second phase is when it gets a bit trickier though because that's when he busts out the oversized hammer to compensate for his tiny wiener but once he does that I just start running away and whenever he does the hammer slam I switch to two handing my dagger and do my blood slash ability from a distance. After that it's just a lot of running around getting stuck on obstacles because I can't just simply roll through them until he either does his hammer slam again or he does his attack with a really long wind up which is great because once you see him doing the wind up you can just simply run up on him and get ready to parry him again. After about 40 attempts though I was able to finally kill this legend. And speaking of legends. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends and it is a great time to be sponsored by them because they just happen to be celebrating their third anniversary so that means a ton of freebies for you guys. And what better way to celebrate their third anniversary than to show you my three favorite champions in the game. My first favorite champion would have to be Drake because I mean just look at this guy. He looks awesome. He has great stats and he is someone I would love to have as an enemy in Elden Ring because he just looks so badass and he looks like he would be super fun to fight. My second favorite champion would have to be the Defiled Sinner because not only is that an awesome name to have but I just love dual wielding characters and I love the undead look he has going and I wish I could get armor like this in Elden Ring because I would be rocking that all the time. And last but not least, my third favorite would have to be Miss Skullcrown here because of her huge voluptuous staff. I mean, look at it. It looks sick. And I especially love the crown because it looks absolutely awesome. And like I said before, Raid's celebrating their third anniversary this month, so it's going to be huge. They have an insane amount of stuff in store for you guys. They're kicking it off with free gifts for everyone. We're talking new champions and new artifact sets. And if that's not enough, they got a full month of special events and tournaments with some of Raid's best ever prizes on offer, including badass champions and piles and piles of shards with tons of other goodies. This is the absolute best time to join Raid, and if you're not already playing yet, hit the link in my description or scan the QR code on the screen and you'll get a huge special birthday package worth over $40. We're talking three free champions at once, Misericord, Tiger Soul, and Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, and 10 Spirit Brews. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. And don't worry if you're already an existing player because the gifts keep coming. For existing players, you get a bunch of free birthday gifts worth over $25. Once you're in the game, after clicking on the link, just enter the promo code 3 years raid, all one word to get your hands on everything. It's super simple. This promo code is available until the 14th of May, so do not wait around. It is super simple, just click the link in the description and I'll see you in the game. Next up on the hit list is Godric, but first we actually have to make it to him, and you probably assume I took the Puss Boy way around because it would just be too difficult to get through the main gate without rolling, but you would be wrong because you forgot about the all important patent pending bob and weave technique that'll get you through any sticky situation out there. Before I actually fight him though, I did want to get some new talismans because I don't really need the one that negates holy damage anymore, so I head over to the Bestiality Sanctum to do some hardcore parkour and- god damn it. We do some hardcore parkour to make it to the bottom and I grab the Dragon Shield Talisman that reduces physical damage even though I have never been hit in a single Souls game in my entire life and I put that on Captain Crunch so you know I'm serious. 
I also grabbed the Crimson Talisman and a couple somber smithing stones to upgrade my dagger, and then I went out and grabbed the Jellyfish Shield for its special ability that boosts your attack power, but I didn't even have enough strength to use it anyway, so it didn't even matter yet. And like I said at the beginning of the video, my original plan was just to do a no rolling run, but like halfway through I decided I wouldn't block either, so I did have to go back and redo some of the fights, but a lot of the fights I never blocked anyway, so I didn't bother redoing those fights, but you will see me with a shield during some of those fights until like halfway through the game. Now with all that preparation out of the way, we can take on the boy, and this was actually much easier than the first fight, even though I can't parry him, which is a bummer, but we had a surprising number of opportunities where he left himself open after doing an attack that would just allow me to run right in there, get a few hits, and then sprint away with plenty of time left. The easiest attack that he does to take advantage of is his tornado attack, as long as you're standing close to him, because if you're far away, he'll throw the tornadoes at you, which are really hard to avoid when I can't roll, but as long as you're standing really close to him, he'll just do this rolling jumping attack, and you can kind of just stand there, give him that fluoride stare, and slightly walk forward, and he'll miss you completely. Also, if you get lucky like I did, when he's transitioning into his second phase, you can just keep hitting him with a dagger, and if you're lucky, you'll get some bleed damage, and that'll make the second phase even easier. At the start of the second phase, it's really easy just to bum rush him through the fire and flames. And even though I did take a hit, you can still get a ton of damage in. As long as you're just standing right in front of him, you usually won't get hit. But I suck and still got hit, but it really doesn't matter anyway. After that, it's just waiting for him to do another flame attack, where you can just do the same thing, run up on him, get some hits. Or you can just wait for him to do another tornado attack, which is exactly the same as the first phase, except there's a fire effect. But you can avoid it in the exact same way. 3 out of 10, not too bad of a fight at all, but you're going in the trash. Before the next boss fight, we need to head on down to Drift Town, USA, and unfortunately for this man, he is the only citizen here, and I quickly murder him in cold blood for his sick fit. Next we go grab the key to get into the castle, and then we take on this good boy, and despite it looking kind of easy, this actually took me a really long time to beat, and the only good thing about this fight is that he has very little health. I basically just spent this entire fight trying to get directly behind him, and it makes it much easier whenever he does his jumping sword attack because you can just easily position yourself to be right behind him when he lands, and he has a tough time hitting you when you're back there, and you can just get a ton of damage in whenever he does that attack. Also, I decided not to lock on a lot during this fight because that made it a bit easier to maneuver behind him, and for some reason my guy just does not want to sprint half the time when I'm locked on, so I just decided against it. At the very end of the fight, I got really greedy because this is one of the fights that I had to redo, but I hadn't made him bleed yet at that point, and luckily at the last second I was finally able to make him bleed and take away the last of his health literally milliseconds before he was about to spin around and kill me. Now we can take on the Feet Lady, and the first phase was about as easy as I expected, and the first few attempts I was actually able to beat her after knocking her down only one time, but the time I beat her it took me two attempts because I accidentally kept hitting all the other kids in the room. Wow, that whole sentence made me sound like I have some domestic violence issues. The second phase, I just immediately put the pressure on her, I just run up on her, quickly sneak a foot sniff in there, and then just start slashing away. Most of her spells can be avoided pretty easily just by running to the left or right at an angle, besides the big beam attack, which I do have to jump to avoid that and time it pretty well, or I usually get hit. I spent most of the fight just rushing her down, trying to get back in her face to keep slashing away, until she starts summoning other enemies, because at that point it gets a little more difficult, because if you're standing too close, it'll actually knock you down, and whatever she summons could usually hit you at that point. As long as you can get away, it's not too hard just to ignore them, and they kind of ignore me too, probably because they're trying to get a good look at those toes, but I just keep attacking her instead, and that's all I really had to do to finish the fight. I really did not plan on keeping this dagger for this long, I only got it because it was one of the only weapons that I could hold at my level that was better than the dagger I already had, but this thing straight up comes. It looks cool, it's super fast, its special attack is really useful, and it's just all around great. 10 out of 10, wood smash. Before taking on the Tree Sentinel, I wanted to get another Talisman, and this one increases my attack power as long as I do consecutive hits, and I wanted to see if that would help at all, so I do have to kill this boss, which luckily I can parry, so that wasn't too bad. And I was really close to getting a perfect fight without taking any damage, but I whiffed my last parry like a dunce and had to put on my dunce cap, but I was still able to kill her off a few seconds later. It did not help at all on the next boss fight. You might actually be surprised to learn that you can actually parry the Tree Sentinel, but it is really difficult because of the angle he swings his weapon and he's above you, so it just makes it really weird to time, but it doesn't matter anyway because once he starts summoning his lightning and shooting fireballs at you, it's almost impossible to avoid without being able to roll. So instead of that, I did the bravest thing ever. I grabbed a talisman that increases my faith, popped a rune for some more faith, and then I bought Rot Breath, and did the bajillion IQ tactic of hitting him with Rot Breath and running away. It took a couple times, and a lot of time spent hiding in the bushes, Hold up. I'm hiding in the bushes. but this is definitely one of the easiest ways to beat him in this game. 
Now it's time for the old broke boy version of Godfrey, and usually this is one of the easiest fights for me because of how easy it is just to roll behind him whenever he does his stomp attack, but since I can't do that, I had to try something else that was basically just me using my blood slash move at a distance as much as I possibly could. Unfortunately, I don't think it's possible to make him bleed, which I guess makes sense since he's a goddamn spooky ghost, but it still does decent damage on its own. I also had to use my dagger a lot during this fight, which was pretty tricky to find the right time to use it, but whenever he did his overhand axe slam attack, that was when I would rush in and try to get a couple hits and then run away, which can be pretty tricky because it's really hard to keep the right distance to be able to get close enough, but not get hit at the same time. Another tough part about this fight is you really need to avoid going down that thin hallway because if you do, you're going to have to get back around the boss to get to the center of the arena, and it's basically impossible to get around him without being able to roll without taking a hit. This was definitely one of the tougher fights so far, mostly because I couldn't make him bleed and do a bunch of damage that way, so I had to fight him the old fashioned way, and that just makes it take way longer. Next we have to fight Morgai, and I really wanted to parry him to death, but it is so fucking hard. The first time you fought him, you only had to parry him twice before you can stagger him, but this version you have to parry him three times, and parrying him at all just one time is hard enough on its own. I don't know what it was, if he was just too fast or I was just too stupid, but I tried for a couple hours and I could just not get the parry timing down for this fight. I was hardly ever able to even parry him one time during this fight, let alone three times in a row, and even if I did manage to pull that off, it's not like it would even do that much damage anyway. So I did have to switch up my strategy a lot, and I basically just did the same thing I did in the last fight, which was basically just rely on the blood slash attack so I could stay out of range and not get too close and risk taking damage. It also helps a lot that it can actually make him bleed, so that makes the damage output a lot better in this fight. The range on the blood slash really isn't great, but it's just enough to get by. Once I got to the second phase, I just hit him with the rot breath, and after that, I just treated him like my dad treated me, and that's just by staying absolutely as far away as possible from him. I got lucky that he never did the attack where he dashes at you with the red trail that explodes and stuff, because I have no idea how I would have avoided that. I probably would have just had to tank the hit, but luckily that never happened, and it made for a pretty smooth second phase. Now I can take on the Fire Giant, which is a fight I have been dreading, honestly, so I wanted to get a few more upgrades before I try that, because I know it's going to be a huge pain in the ass. So I headed for the sewers under the capital, which is a place that I hate going, because I have absolutely no sense of direction down here, and getting past Larry the Lobster without rolling was no easy task. Eventually, though, we do make it to the boss that I'm looking for, and I hit him with the old Rot Breath, and then I finish off his dogs, and then I finish off the man himself, and I get a talisman that increases my attack power whenever there's blood loss near me. I also wanted to get a cracked tier that increases my attack power with consecutive hits, but unfortunately for me, it's in the concentrated snow fields, and the skip that I used to use to get there without the medallions has been patched now, so I do need to kill Commander O'Reilly's auto parts, and that is no easy task. The first thing I need to do in this fight is take out his two sidekicks, so I start with some Rot Breath to damage them a little bit, but more importantly, I affect O'Reilly with it so I can start taking down his health a little bit while I focus on his goons. Luckily we can parry these guys, but it does take a little bit of finessing to get them separated so you can just focus on fighting them one on one, but once they're separate, it's not too hard to parry them and kill them when it's a one on one fight. Eventually I take them both out, then it's just me and the main boss, and we could also parry him as well, but it's pretty dangerous to try that because whenever you get close to him he loves to do his whirlwind snow shit and it hurts you just from being near him, so I opted just to use my blood slash most of the time. Except in this one instance when I did manage to parry him, but I hardly did any damage anyway, so keeping my distance and using ranged attacks is definitely the way to go. Now I just need to kill the tree boss, and I use the all too brave tactic of hitting him with a blood slash and then running away until he de aggros and then doing it all over again. This took a very long time, but eventually we do kill him and we get the crack tier that we're looking for. After that, I do attempt to fight the fire giant, and without being able to roll through his attacks, it is very difficult to not take an absolute ass beating during this fight, and the damage I'm doing is not ideal at all. So at this point, I finally decide it's time to get rid of this dagger and get a lot more powerful. So I head out to this church, grind this skeleton guy for literally like 30 minutes before he finally dropped the weapon I wanted, and he actually dropped two of them at once, so that saved me a lot of time. Then I head out to the frozen lake to kill the scarab for his seppuku ash of war, and then I get bell bearings 1, 2, and 3 so I can buy a ton of smithing stones to upgrade my new weapons, and then I also kill another commander boss so I can get his weapon which has the ability to increase my attack power even more. Now I can take on the fire giant again, and the run up to him alone, he just starts beating my ass. I mean, he was showing no mercy, just beating the absolute piss out of me, fucking me with no lube. It was probably the worst start to any of my attempts, but I somehow still beat him. Once I finally manage to reach him, I just immediately get to work, and I am doing so much more damage than I was with the dagger. It is still extremely difficult to avoid taking hits because he just likes constantly stepping on me with those cute feet, and any other time I would enjoy this, but this time I was on a mission, but it really doesn't take me too long to get to the second phase. 
At the start of the second phase, we stab ourselves some more because I just love the pain, and then we continue our destruction from there. I was able to avoid his fire attacks for the most part, and I just immediately start slicing away at his feet and thighs, ooh woo, and although I made it look pretty easy, it still took me a good 15 to 20 tries because you have to get extremely lucky to not get crushed by him. Avoiding most of his attacks was pretty difficult, and I pretty much just had to tank everything since I couldn't roll, but with enough luck and persistence, I was able to finally take him down, and this was for sure the hardest fight so far. After that, I decided I was ready to go take on Radon now, and it did take me a really long time, but you can actually avoid the purple arrows at the beginning of the fight with a very well-timed jump, but you have to be extremely precise with it. I didn't have time to stab myself for the extra damage because he would have just shot me, but it really didn't matter anyway because once we get to him, I do plenty of damage already. And once I did reach him, I just stayed extremely close to him because it makes him miss a lot, and I just didn't stop swinging no matter what. I only needed a few combos to get off to actually get him into a second phase. After that, all we have to do is avoid his dive bomb attack, get a few more combos in before he decides to kill you, and boom, we just somehow beat Radon without blocking, rolling, summons, or using our horse. Gang gang. <laughs> Why did I just say that? And because I wasn't overpowered enough already, I headed over to the Shaded Castle to get this recipe, gathered some materials, and made some Bloody Marys, and then we headed for the duo boys. And before the fight, we naturally have to put on like 1, 2, or 17 buffs, and then we run in there and just start whacking away. I immediately started focusing on the big one first because I wanted to avoid having to avoid his rolling attack and then after that I finished off the skinny one and I probably spent more time waiting for them to respond than I actually did fighting them and I am very much enjoying this build not gonna lie. So I wanted to get the Blasphemous Claw so I can flex on the next boss and parry him, but unfortunately I am wearing the armor of the man who drops it after you kill him after he invades you. I knew it was a long shot, but I wanted to see if he would still invade me anyway even though I killed him, but unfortunately we do have to kill Rikard first for that to happen, so I went ahead and did that. I originally planned just to use the weapon in the room that you're supposed to use, but out of curiosity I just decided to jump in the lava and just start swinging away, and it was surprisingly effective. I also got another cracked here before this fight that makes my stamina recover a lot faster because it made this fight a lot easier and I was actually able to get through the first phase pretty quickly. The second phase does take a bit longer than the first and the hitboxes in this fight are a little bit fucky, probably because this is not the way they intended you to fight him so a lot of my hits were missing when they probably shouldn't have been, making this fight take way longer than it should have. And in all of my attempts I did have to run around the arena at one point to avoid the skulls and stuff, but other than that you can just stand in the lava the entire time and just keep healing through the damage from it and the boss. After a ton of tries I was able to- FUCK! After I bought a new monitor I came back and killed him for real. Now I can go see if he'll still invade me, and I really doubted that he would, but holy shit, he actually does, and he did kill me the first time because I wasn't ready for it, but I came back, clapped them cheeks, and got the Blasphemous Claw. Which was completely pointless because I didn't even end up using it. And I knew this was going to be a quick fight, but in his first phase, he literally only lasted like 10 seconds. Not that there's anything wrong with only lasting 10 seconds, I mean, some of us are trying our best, and we have our off days, you know, and you didn't have to tell your friends about it, bitch, goddamn. Anyway, in the second phase, I just immediately run up on him, and you can just do a ton of damage, and I waited for a while for him to do his jumping attack so I could try to parry the last hit, but I completely whiffed it, and then I waited for another long time for him to do it again, but he just refused to do it, so I just attacked him anyway, and I killed him instead. GG. Not really, you suck. <laughs> now it's time for the menace himself, Gideon. And this fight, oh my god, it was hard as fuck. He is basically the soldier of Godric if he went Super Saiyan Black Ultra God Instinct form or something. Actually, I don't know, I haven't seen Dragon Ball Z in like 10 years and they keep adding new forms and the last time I saw him, this man's hair was blue so I don't really know what's going on anymore. Now it's time to test our Ultra Blood build on the Lord of Blood himself and uh... Need I say more? I actually forgot to bring the crystal tear that negates his attack in the second phase, but it clearly didn't matter anyway because he never got the chance to use it, and this is how you get 400k runes in about 30 seconds. Next on the list is the first Elden Lord himself, and this fight actually did take me a ton of tries because if you just get hit by him one time, you're almost guaranteed to get comboed to death as long as you cannot roll out of it or block his attacks. But once the stars aligned, after about 30 tries or so, I was finally able to do this to him and I audibly yelled for joy when I killed him and I accidentally woke my dog up and it kinda made me feel like poo. Before we get to the last boss fight though, I need to at least attempt the one fight that most of you are probably waiting for me to do, and that is obviously the Soldier of Godric. And let me tell you, this guy is the real menace. FromSoft needs to nerf him ASAP. All of his attacks are straight up bullshit and unavoidable. I thought these games were supposed to be tough but fair, but clearly they forgot to put the fair part when they were making this boss. 
I tried this fight at least 6,000 times and I just could not do it. I am very sorry. Please don't dislike this video and unsubscribe. You do not know what it's like to be me and be put through this mental torture. Please forgive me. After recovering from the PTSD from that last fight, I was finally ready to take on Ragoon, and unfortunately for me, I cannot just kill him in the first few seconds of the fight like I was hoping, but I can get him below half health, so that's pretty good too. After that, he almost always does his jumping hammer slam attack, and it actually took me a while to figure out how to avoid taking damage because you kind of have to delay your jump slightly after the hammer hits the ground because it wasn't the hammer itself that was hitting me, it's the explosion from the ground that hits me. After that, he'll almost always do his ultimate three slam attack, and you can just jump over these as well, but I usually just said fuck it and just started swinging on him as soon as I could reach him because I knew I could just take down the rest of his health regardless if he hit me or not. You do have a little bit of time before the next fight starts, so you can reactivate a couple buffs before the next fight, but I do have to heal after all that, so I can only activate like one or two buffs before I fight the Elden Beast. After I got pretty good at getting past the Ragoon part, the Elden Beast is always what was killing me most of the time because I could just not manage to jump over that horizontal slash where he sends out like a wave of holy damage at you. I'm sure it's possible, but I could just never get lucky enough to do it. Eventually though, I did get lucky enough to the point that he just wouldn't swim away most of the time and I could just run up on him and just keep doing a ton of damage until he decided to fly in the air and do that ring attack, but that one's super easy just to jump over and luckily he swam up right next to me and I can just continue hitting him. I did get really greedy at the end and take a risk because he did summon that gold orb that just shoots sparklers everywhere at you, but I just ignored it because I'm a greedy bastard, and it worked out in my favor because I did end up beating him even though I was getting hit by that stuff. And yeah, we just beat Elden Ring without rolling or blocking a single time, and all it took was one of the most overpowered builds in any Souls game I have ever seen in my life, and I am not ashamed. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been an absolute crazy last month and a half. We basically went from like 1,000 subscribers to almost 100,000 subscribers at the point of recording this, and I am just so grateful for everything. I also plan on doing a giveaway once I hit 100,000 subscribers, so if you're not already subscribed, you should do that if you want a piece of that action, but if you don't want to, I still appreciate you all the same. But yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.